right, what's up, everybody? Woo! Let me tell ya. This is Robert Ferguson, your nutritionist, a guy who shares because he cares. If you're here for the first time, I want to say thank you for being here. Please share, like, subscribe, comment if you can. And if you don't want to miss anything that we put up, go to our YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe there. And if you are subscribed with our YouTube channel, then don't keep it a secret. Share with other people. Now, today we're going to have a really quick discussion, a very transparent, impromptu conversation about inflammation in the body, insulin resistance, and it's going to be a good thing. And joining me in this conversation is one of our coaches, Miss Susie Lopez. What's up, Susie Lopez? Hi, Robert. I'm doing great. How are you doing? We are doing great. So thank you for this radio opportunity. They can't see us, but they can hear us, if you know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, not today. I'm not able to be on video today, but I'm just glad we're doing this. So. All right. Well, you know what? I had a call earlier, and I know you caught me when I was talking to Coach Christina. And uh, we just kind of impromptu went forward, kind of what we're doing right now. And I know that uh, you have a eight-week challenge that you're launching you just did an orientation on it and it went very well. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so for those of you who would like to contact Susie Lopez, reach out to her because she's got a challenge starting locally. I don't know if you can make it possible for people who aren't local to participate, but um, I guess they can reach out and find out more about what you offer, right? Absolutely. There, you know, that may be a possibility uh, doing a, a weekly a Zoom call um, for those that cannot be attending uh, live in person. So yeah, absolutely. Reach out to me and we'll figure out a way. Okay. Well, um, and there's a lot of things we could talk about. Right. Right. But I want to go with what you want to talk about because I know that you have interest and you saw in the eyes of the people that you presented to last week, uh, when they hear the word inf inflammation, it seems to be something that a lot of people are battling with, right? Yes absolutely it's an issue okay and so when you think of inflammation or when you think of people who have interest in tackling inflammation in their body i don't know what what comes to mind what what would you like where would you like to start right so if you were the client or you were representing the people and you were talking to me and i'm sitting here saying hey i think i have a solution for people who are battling with inflammation and insulin resistance what kind of questions would you have for me? Right. You know, I um, when I think of inflammation, I and this is something I hear about from my clients, from friends, from family, I think about pain. People are in pain. Um, I think about um, joint pain. I think about just overall, you know, just feelings of discomfort. And, and I'm just learning a lot about you know, I'm learning more about this um, as a nutritionist, as a weight loss coach, and things that you you are teaching me. Um, but that's what comes to my mind, and I feel like I really need to guide my friends, my family, my clients into a better way of dealing with this. Um, so that's why that's why we're here. I want to talk more about it. All right. Well, let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So where do you want to go? Where's the first question? Well, you know, what what can be done? Because, you know, I, I'm aware of, you know, how bad seed oils are for us. And I know that that's contributing to inflammation. So what else can be done? Because let's say, for example, um, someone who has actively removed that from their diet and they're still dealing with inflammation, they're still dealing with 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 this situation so what else could be done because right now i'm thinking there is another way right there's another way to to to, to deal with this well going back to food as medicine approach right so right. let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food we know that what we've been eating is part of why we're in the situation that we're in yes and there's a lot of people who don't even know that there's a disconnect. They don't even see the connection. Um, and so if food can get us into a situation that we don't like, 
food can get us out of a situation that we don't like. But yes. we must get educated. So you know the comedian Kevin Hart, right? Yes, I do. So Kevin Hart has a restaurant. Have you heard about his restaurant? Actually, I haven't. No. So I just happened to go to his restaurant by accident a couple days ago. I was in L.A. dropping, uh, picking up my daughter from the airport to bring her home. She went to Dallas to compete in a big cheer competition. And so I wanted to surprise her with a smoothie. So I saw a Robex, kind of like a Jamba Juice. And I went there and I needed to go to the restroom. So I put in the order. And then the guy said they didn't have a restroom. But I noticed there was a restaurant next door. I didn't look at the name of the restaurant. I just said, you know what? Let me grab something to eat myself, get a snack. So I go inside and I walk in. And there's, there's not a lot of people in there. But it was clean. And I go up to order. And I realized this is Kevin Hart's restaurant. Mm, okay. And his restaurant is plant-based restaurant, meaning they're pushing um, everything that's plant-based, you know, like uh, similar to Impossible Meat, uh, Beyond Burger. So they had chicken burgers. They served fries. They had nuggets. And first thing I did when I went up to order is I said, hey, what kind of oil do you guys use? And she said, well, we used to use safflower oil or sunflowers, one or the other. But now we're using rice bran oil. <laughs> now, she doesn't know it, but right. I know it. That that's a seed oil that causes inflammation. Yes. That causes a person to have insulin resistance. So this is a restaurant where everything you're eating and everything that's cooked is designed to inflame your body. Now, I don't right. know if Kevin knows this. I don't know if he wants to know this, but <laughs> he has a restaurant that is offering inflammation to people. And so you have people who are uninformed and don't know any better. They think it's plant-based, so let me go and order some food here. This would be healthier for me than to go next door where they have real meat, real chicken, um, and food that may be cooked in a better oil. So right. I opened up with all of this, Susie, because you have a celebrity or you have someone behind him. They're putting in millions of dollars opening up things. People are spending millions of dollars eating this stuff. And the people who are serving the food are part of the problem. Yes. And I mean, imagine, think about that. If you went and ate in his restaurant every day, you would be consuming a significant amount of seed oils. Uh, let's call them omega-6 oils. And now you're inflamed and you're wondering, man, why is my lupus getting worse? Why is my arthritis getting worse? Why am I having a harder time losing weight? I'm eating plant-based, but it's the oils that's killing you and you don't even know it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's where we everything. are. Yeah, it's in everything. And that Everything. was scary because the amount of processed food that we eat, plus the oils, like you just mentioned, that are being used that we're not even aware of, right? And it's the consumption is so high that we don't even know why we have these problems. Yeah. And you would think that your doctor would bring it to your attention, but your doctor doesn't. And this is why I want you and others to get motivated here because... With this new company becoming a tool of ours, we can reach more people. And instead of us assuming that they're inflamed or they uh, have some challenges on a cellular level, we can quickly and easily say, hey, let's do a test. And once they do the test, the results come in. Okay, it's, it has nothing to do with my opinion at that point. It has everything to do with the facts that you're out of balance. And the good news is that we can help get you back in balance. Absolutely. But if you, but if you don't test, all you can do is guess. Right. Right. I mean, and it's it, really and, just and, like any, I'm sorry. I was just going well, no, to really just like, a, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, I was just, just going to say that. If, and if you guess, you're more likely to remain a mess. 
I love those uh, those those lines you come up with, Robert. They're hilarious. <laughs> well, I mean, it just I, I had I had to get that out. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> the, the, the good news is that we can reverse. The, this can all be reversed, you guys. And it's not about selling you something. It's about sharing information with you, right? Because most people don't know when they eat mayo that one of the first ingredients is soybean oil in most mayo. Yes. Most people don't know that the number one consumed edible oil in the world is soybean oil. And the reason why that doesn't get their attention is because they don't know anyone who goes to the store and buys soybean oil. People don't right. buy soybean oil. So where are we getting it from? It's in everything you're eating. If you got crackers, you got cereal. Uh, like I watched someone, I was at the, at the coffee store. And they were a little bougie. And <laughs> so when they ordered their coffee, they wanted a splash of oat milk. And when they asked for oat milk, uh, I made a comment. I said, you ever put soy milk in your coffee? They go, oh, I would never do that. What about um, oat milk? Ah, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I do oat milk. Uh, I actually care about my health. <laughs> As we were sitting there waking on their coffee to come, I asked the lady in the back who was bringing the coffee, I said, hey, um, can I see the label on the, uh, the oat milk? She goes, sure. She gave it to me, and I shared with this person. I said, look, and they saw safflower and sunflower oil in their precious oat milk. Oh my goodness, that that's so, horrible. But you see what I mean? So here they yeah. are thinking that they're being healthier than everyone else. Right. But they're consuming seed oils and they have no clue about the negatives of seed oils. Right, right. And it's in everything. I mean, that's just one example, right? It's just one example. So yeah. So, so you know, that's where we are, and that's why. You know, as a coach, if you're in a position where you can quickly get your your clients tested to find out their levels of, of oil on a cellular level, now that person's more informed. Right. And now it's up to you, and now you got their attention to, to educate them and help them, you know, uh, reverse the damage that they're, they've caused on, on themselves. Absolutely. Yeah, so so my thing, inflammation can be a good thing, especially if you get injured, right? Because okay. blood will rush to that area to help you. But for people who are experiencing chronic inflammation that is being caused from the inside, the best thing they can do is to eat in a way, exercise in a way, and consume uh, these oils that we make available consistently and then use the test to see if they're making progress, which they will. They will. Right. And how, how, why would you like, why would you say that, that, why are you like so certain about them improving? Like, is, can you share more about that? Okay. Well, the science is very clear on this as well as, Again, as I said, if someone is committed to doing what is necessary, if they eat like crap and they do nothing to improve their situation but take the oil, we know consistently by consuming more omega-3s, same as if they ate more salmon, more sardines, that they will increase the ratio on a cellular level and they won't be as inflamed. Because all of the science, all of the studies, thousands and thousands of studies prove that increasing your intake of omega-3 oils reduces inflammation, Susie. It's not my opinion. It's not I woke up one morning and was like, hey, I think omega-3s will be. No, they're good across <laughs> the board, all countries, all over the world, every, the consensus, everybody agrees. So everybody simply by, agrees. Simply by taking omega-3, that will combat the amount of omega-6 in your body. 
Well, it doesn't come. So what? Okay. So one, you got to make sure you have a quality omega three. Okay. Okay. So we have a quality one because someone could hear us talking. They go, oh, "I'm gonna go to the store and buy it." We don't know if that one's good. Again, there's no test. We don't know. So when I'm talking about omega three oils, I'm talking about quality omega three oils, and I'm specifically referring to what we can make available because it's quality and the oils are encapsulized with uh, polyphenols, which, oh, wow. which work like antioxidants. Right. And that make it that much more efficient. It also protects the oil from going rancid. It's a win-win. So if a person is taking the, the omega oils on a regular basis, that means daily, and it's not difficult to do, uh, and these have no smell. There's no uh, odor of fish. You swallow it. You don't burp up fish like some of these other products that are out there. You're getting a really good product. So if I had high blood pressure, if I had high triglycerides, if I was dealing with inflammation, if I was insulin resistant, if I f felt that I was having a hard time struggling with weight loss, Maybe I'm leptin re resistant. Without question, if there's a quality oil, then they would be taking it. Okay. Now, so, I, I can say that because there's people with high blood pressure, that scary high blood pressure, and they will not take their blood pressure medication because, not because they don't want it to work, but because they're not compliant. They're unorganized and they just aren't taking it that seriously. That's why you have so many people that have these sudden unexpected strokes and heart attacks. And then when they have a heart attack and they're sitting in the hospital with tubes in their nose, then they're like, okay, I got to take this seriously. I got to do something. And they, they feel that way when they're in there. But when they get out, they just go back to their old ways until they end up in the hospital again. Right. Yeah. But that's not everybody. Some of us really want to do what we can to improve our situation. And those right. are the people that I'm speaking to. Okay. Well, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about qual the quality oil because I heard you say um, that most of these oils are rancid. Is that right? That's right. So if you, there's been studies, same as they would do studies on avocado oil. Right. Like when UC Davis did a study on avocado oil, they discovered that over 80 percent of avocado oil is not even avocado oil. It's adulterated. It's actually soybean oil. Which you would say that's illegal. How can the government let that happen? And that's a whole nother conversation. But it does happen. And it's been proven again and again and again. Well, the same thing when it comes to fish oil. We know that over 80 percent of fish oil that's sold is rancid. It's not even effective. Wow, over 80%? Over 80%. That's, that's horrible. And a lot of times, like, I've been with people and, and clients when they used to come to my office, and I would say, bring in your fish oil, because I've been interested in this for years. Right. I would take my little knife, and I would cut the little gel, so I would open up the fish oil. And you can tell just in the consistency of the oil that it's tainted or it's rancid. And then you can just smell it. And then when you yeah. taste it, it doesn't... You know how when you've tasted this one, the one that we yes. make available is smooth like olive oil. You know, I just tried, I, I gotta be honest. Um, I just started today. I took my, my test, my balance test this morning to see where I am without it. And I took my first, uh, my first shot <laughs> of the oil and it was really good. I actually enjoyed it. Um, the one I got was uh, orange with a mint flavor and I, you could just smell the mint and taste it. Um, and it was tasty. I actually really liked it. Um, right. No you, taste or smell whatsoever. And you did two teaspoons, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So now you've done a test. Like I was talking to one of my clients this uh, right before we talked, Lynn. Lynn, I'm so proud of her because she's not feeling well. And Lynn, I hope you hear this. I told her to go on Netflix and watch some movies and drink some uh, water and get herself some some uh, hot soup and just rest, right? And I said, and laugh, find a way to laugh. 
So she may not be catching us because I told her to go to, to Netflix and watch some stand up comedy. But the reason I bring her up is that Lynn goes, Hey, I want to get the test. She heard me talking with Christina. Right. And I said, Great. So I said, Hey, look, I'll make the test available to you for $75. You know, she's on a fixed income. So she's not, you know, jumping into the oil. Right. Plus, she feels like she's been eating pretty good. And so let's just see what the test says. Now, I could be totally wrong, but my gut says the test is going to tell her to start using oil. Right. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, we will see. And that's what's really cool about this test, because, you know, um, there's different ways you can get tested for different things. Right. And. Uh, for example, when we check for, for where someone is with their insulin levels, we know that there's different resources for that. And some are more, you know, expensive than others, um, but it mostly all require, I actually don't know of any place that you can do it at home. Um, it's all required for you to go into a laboratory, take time out of your day, uh, things like that. So this test that we are making available is really cool because it's at the comfort of your home. I literally went over to my mom's this morning after working out and I tested her then and there because she's one of my first customers. So she was kind of blown away with just the way that it could just get done like that. So I think this is awesome, Robert. And wait and wait till you get the report. The report is like 20, 21 pages long. And it's written in a way where you don't need to talk to a doctor. Everything is explained. So once you get the report, you're the average person will take their knowledge of nutrition to a whole nother level. Like they'll have a better understanding of AOLA, alpha linoleic acid. They'll have a better understanding of what EPA and DHA is. That's part of the helpful uh, components of the omega threes What's helping with the brain What's helping with inflammation in the body uh, where a lot of these benefits come from. And it's all broken down. You even have a breakdown of, how much of your in your cell the fat is made up of arachidonic acid so it's it's really it's very cool from that standpoint and it also helps us educate people on what omega-6 is because yes. you you want omega-6 we just don't want it in the concentrated forms that people are getting when it comes to seed oils right because if i eat nuts i'm going to get some omega-6 if I'm eating flax seed, I'm going to get some omega-6. Chia seeds, I'm also going to get some omega-3. So it's naturally helpful, but not to the levels that we're consuming it, right? So, you know, like I did a post earlier where I shared a graphic where we looked at, like, grapeseed oil. Well, to make five tablespoons of grapeseed oil, you need 625 grapes. Wow. A lot of we, grapes. <laughs> we were never designed to sit down and eat 625 grapes. Oh, no. Yeah. If lot. it was corn oil, then it takes 98 ears of corn to make five tablespoons of corn oil. And if you look at sunflower oil that people is in a lot of foods, it takes 2,800 sunflower seeds to make five tablespoons of sunflower oil. And going back to Kevin Hart, who uses rice bran, um, and a lot of people don't even know that that's a seed oil, but it takes 40 cups of brown rice to make five tablespoons of rice bran oil. That's a lot. So, and those people who are running around here saying don't eat meat, help the environment, nobody's talking about how many sunflower seeds need to be grown and broken up and processed to make sunflower oil. They're not talking about 98 ears of corn that we have to grow and we have to process to make five tablespoons of corn oil. You, you see what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. We're not looking at how many animals get killed when you're growing so soybeans or you're growing uh, corn. I mean, it's like everyone has selective uh, focus, which is not fair. And that just makes more confusion. Right. Yeah. 
Yep, so, and then that's what that's what gets us into all this trouble, right? We're just we're not we're not informed. We're just not informed on what what actually is happening, and so we're following people who are just not informed, and we're just we're lost, right? Right, and so, and a lot of it is one of those things where that's why they would hire a coach like you, right? That's why somebody would hire a coach like me, so that they are being informed formed with modern day uh, information that is accurate, then they're informed and they can make decisions that they know would be best for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's what we do. And let me just acknowledge uh, Wendy Sims, <clears throat> who I think would be a great coach. Um, Cause she's very aware. Right? I, I watch her posts, her comments, very insightful. She says oats are also high in toxins, and they are. Uh, and those are that would I think we're talking primarily raw oats from being sprayed with pesticides, which is a problem that a lot of us are experiencing. Right, um, the things that they're adding to the foods to uh, to include a pill and some of these other things to make them you know last on the shelves longer. But she goes on to say that glyphosate destroys the healthy gut microbiome and it also is carcinogenic so that was a product that monsanto which is now owned by bear a uh, lot of there's so many lawsuits with people spraying using glyphosate farmers i mean millions of dollars they're being awarded and it's all quiet it's all hush hush mm -hmm. because it does cause cancer right yeah so so i'm with her there's so much out there so let's not add to the problems let's come up with some things that can help us like when i was talking to christina i shared with her and i've shared this with you we're in one of the studies at this main institute that studies omega-3s they um actually i say this, this institute the one i'm referring to is called a uh, fatty acid research institute uh f-a-r-i fari uh, fatty acid research institute they do a lot of studies on omega-3 they use the omega-3 index testing for all of that but when you go to their site they had this one study where they demonstrated that a person who smokes cigarettes daily but also has a high level of omega-3 in their body has the same um, life expectancy as a non-smoker who has a low omega-3 level wow so so our omega-3 level being that low is 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 really a really bad thing like it's it that's not good no, that is not, that low no it's not good and just think about it from a conspiracy standpoint you're the, everybody who's listening their doctor didn't do an omega test on them no the likelihood no. of the doctor doing an omega test um it would shock me if somebody said oh yeah my doctor did my omega no they didn't because if they did they would have got your attention and you would be thinking differently right so right. that's why when i was talking to you susie and i was like look you need to really look at this company and, and what i'm doing because this is as real as it gets and now we're in a position where we can test someone and then we can inform them and then if they don't want to start eating salmon two three times a week then we have an oil that can work for them and if they're allergic to fish cool they have a vegan version of it i know that's so cool yeah so it's kind of hard when you're aware of something like this to not come across as a salesperson and that's another thing that i want to remind you and other coaches i go I can see myself coming across selling because you want people to know about it. Right. And when you're passionate about it. Sometimes people take that the wrong way and they think, oh, he's just selling a product. Well, for 29 years, you ain't seen me on here just talking about selling a product. I have not. I mean, I haven't seen you for 29 years. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the amount of time that I've that I've followed you and, and learned from you, you you don't. You don't just recommend anything. No, and Which so why would why? I be 
Yeah, and it's not anecdotal. It's not like, hey, take this product and you're going to feel better. Oh, man, you're going to wake up and have more energy. Oh, wow, you're going to get rid of brain fog. Like all this bull crap that people just put out there on certain products. This is something that can actually help. This actually is proven. We have a test. Right. So anyone who chooses not to do the test, number one, I would say that's not a wise thing to do. Number two, I would say, okay, I get it. They don't have money to pay for a test. Some people don't have uh, $75 to pay for a test or $60 to buy a product. They just don't have it. Right. So I get it. I get, you know, and so with those people, I would say, look, if you're not going to test, we know the importance of omegas. What you want to do is you want to become knowledgeable of what is omega six and avoid them as much as possible. Right. And then do whatever you can possible to consume more omega three. That's it. That didn't cost that didn't cost anything, Susie. Absolutely. It's just getting informed, getting informed on what. Okay. So what am I consuming? What am I eating? Right. And you're going to find that you're eating a lot of omega (laughs) six, whether you're wanting to or not. It's in everything, guys. I mean, it's so crazy. Like, um, yesterday I posted a picture of this guy and I can't think of his name, but I've been aware of him for years. He has the Guinness book of record for eating the most Big Macs. And I mean, it's in the thousands and he's been eating them for years. And what's interesting is how people would go, oh, that is gross. Oh, I would never do that. Oh, how can, how is he still alive? And I go, why are you guys thinking that about a man that eats a burger? Mm -hmm. Just because he's been eating Big Macs every day for years. So, so help me understand why he should be dead. You follow me? It's like, if he should be dead, is it just because he went to McDonald's and they, I mean, like, what should make him dead? Because a lot of the burgers people eat at home are probably worse than what he's getting at McDonald's. And they just don't know. Right. It. Now, I also exactly. know exactly that if you eat in McDonald's, I know that the pickle that goes on the Big Mac, I know the pickle has like 10 ingredients in it. So... I don't want to eat a pickle with 10 oh ingredients. God. I would want a pickle with one ingredient and that one ingredient would be pickle. Right. So, yeah. So anyway. I think we, so what do you got? Right. Your no, kid, I, I your kids are, no. <laughs> Actually, they're taking a little longer than usual, which is good because it's giving me some time to, to talk to this talk right now. So I'm good. Okay. No, I thought I heard somebody vacuuming in the background or something. Oh, no. I think it's my computer. <laughs> Um, and then let me see. So Wendy asked a question. She says, do you think you can add your new oil to the mail making process? Uh, I wouldn't, I treat this oil like it's gold actually, because I don't want to run out of it too early. And I have a mail recipe. So I, I actually have a place where I can buy extra virgin avocado. oil, And I also know where, in my recipe, you can use peanut oil. And that would be a good thing. So um, I wouldn't use, I think I think my mayo recipe may ask for a cup of oil. So I definitely wouldn't use this premium oil in a recipe. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's worth too much. So we'll see. And my numbers are pretty good, as you know. But I'm taking it um, because why not? Uh, and the yep. only thing I know is that if, if I'm taking in more and I still eat the same, then there's even more benefits that can come my way. But I know people who super dose with omega uh, threes. So anyway, yeah. any other questions, Susie, before we go? Cause I know you got to take off. Yeah, no, I think I'm good for now. I'm just excited about this, Robert, because this is just another way that I know we can help other people. You know, because not everybody's going to want to make changes with their with their their eating habits. But I know that if this is going to improve just their inflammation, it's just it, just that alone. Like, I am just so excited. For this, so. All right. Well, before we go, I'm going to play a little video of uh, 
and I'll send you the video and maybe our next one we can actually go through this whole video but this is a doctor she's a scientist uh, expert researcher on omega-3 so I'm gonna let her talk a little bit and then I'll pause it and then we'll get out of here okay did you hear me okay sounds good goes for omega-3 you know there's omega-3 is it's probably i think one of the most important you know nutrients that um is it's really overlooked people just don't even really think about it so omega-3 there's three types of of these fatty acids there's the the, the type that you can find in plant sources so that's alpha linoleic acid ala and then there's the EPA, which is icosapentaenoic acid, and then DHA. Um, and those are the two marine sources that you'll find in, um, in fish, but also you can find them in microalgae, which is more of a plant-based source. There was a study that came out of Harvard, I think it was 2009, which identified the marine sources of omega-3 as basically one of the top six preventable causes of death. Uh, in other words, people are not eating enough seafood and fish and um, because of that it was it was calculated that about i think it was something like eighty four thousand deaths per year were attributed to not getting enough epa and dha from the diet okay did you hear that susie yeah she was very that's, clear that's it's, crazy it's one of the most over yes it's one of the most overlooked ingredients uh it definitely ties in the same as like when people were consuming trans fats uh, we had a lot of premature deaths that is very close to if not equal to the fact that we have more deaths because people don't have enough omega-3 wow so we're missing something huge here we've been missing something huge here it's been oh, huge that. well i mean i've been aware of it uh but fortunately i eat the way i eat right but right. i also know that um I've never had a product that I could recommend. So this is the first time I have a product. And the, the best part about that is that it's part of my business now. So I don't want to, I don't want to come across compromise or that I'm biased. And that's why we must make sure we have a lot of data to support our recommendations. So people don't think we're recommending it because we get paid. Right, right. We've looked at a whole bunch of products. And so, yes, I'm going to recommend what I know is a good product. So I'm going to let her go just, go just a little bit more and then we'll stop. Okay. Okay. And this was really comparable to people that were eating trans fats. Everybody knows trans fats are bad. You walk into any grocery store, it's zero trans fats on every packaging thing you can see. It's very much in the public awareness that trans fats are bad. Well, trans fats were responsible for the same number of deaths as not getting EPA and DHA. So it was responsible for 82,000 deaths per year. Um, before I kind of go deeper into that, I mean, it's kind of just, but that makes you think about it. It's like, oh, wow. So the, 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 the same number of deaths were attributable to eating trans fats as not eating enough EPA and DHA from marine sources, you know, fish, for example. And it kind of really makes you think about things because you don't walk into a supermarket and nothing says, oh, this isn't seafood. This isn't getting your EPA and DHA. This is processed. This, you know, but yet everything tells you about trans fats. And it was, you know, just as important, important to get those, you know, omega-3 fatty acids from marine sources. Um, now I say marine sources because ALA, which is the, the, the common um, source of omega-3 found in plants like flax seeds, walnuts, for example, that is actually considered the essential fatty acid because we can convert ALA into EPA and DHA. And so, you know, all the government agencies that comes up with these RDAs and, you know, all those standards that are set, um, basically it goes down to, oh, well, because we can make EPA and DHA from ALA, that's going to be the one that we focus on. The problem with that is that the conversion of ALA into EPA and then subsequently DHA um, is, it's very inefficient and there's a widespread genetic differences with respect to that conversion. So um, people, some people are great. They have a, they have a, a alteration 
in the desaturase gene that does the conversion of ALA into EPA, and they do it quite well. Um, I would say the majority of people have another version that are not so great at it. And to kind of add fuel to the fire, having too much of vegetable oils, um, omega-6 fatty acids, I don't want to demonize them so much because like you can get, you need linoleic acid, you need arachnidonic acid. It's part of your cell membrane. It's have important functions. Getting them from whole food sources like walnut, like nuts is great, um, you know, but the vegetable oils are very, very concentrated and a lot of cooking. If you eat out, if you buy processed foods are usually cooked and, and processed with vegetable oils. That omega-6, when it's too high, can compete with that enzyme that's required to convert ALA into EPA. And so you may be getting enough ALA. By the way, that's the other problem. People aren't even eating flaxseed and walnuts. They're not even getting enough ALA. So there's so many layers to this. There's so many layers. Um, okay, I'm going to stop there because there was, wow. I wanted you to hear that much of it, Susie, because if someone does to say they're vegan and they eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and plants, right? In that plant food you're eating, you get an adequate amount of ALA, which is what she said. That's all, um, omega-6. Mm -hmm. And there's these enzymes in our body that converts the ALA into DHA uh, and EPA, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which is an active ingredient with all the benefits of reducing inflammation. But when you have an abundance of omega-6 in your body, it competes. It competes, yeah. With those enzymes. And so the conversion doesn't take place. Right. And then the cells get more rigid. They lack the ability to easily let toxins out of the cell. And if it has a hard time letting things out, that means it has a really difficult time letting things, things in. in. Wow. And that shows up in early death, premature death, uh, cardiovascular events, and the list goes on and on and on. And so what I expect to see more as we make this product available that will be in alignment with what the studies are saying. So it's not like we're, you know, like there's two different things. Um, people are going to start to say, you know what? I used to have this ache and that's gone. Hey, I used to have dry skin. Now it's gone. I was battling with dry eye. Now it's gone. My hair, I was starting to lose it. It was starting to get a little light. Now it's more full and more rich. And this is all because they increased their omega-3s. That's, wow, that's, that's crazy. That's just like, it's mind-blowing. It, it is. is. And it's more mind-blowing the more you dig into it. Because you'll have some people say, well, there are some studies that say that omega-3 didn't do this and didn't do that. And, and I go, dude, there's thousands of studies. And when you have randomized controlled trials and they duplicate those trials, which makes it validated, verified, and reproducible, now you're talking science. Right. Again, the, the reason why most physicians aren't pushing it heavy is because they don't have a prescription. Right. There's no that. financial incentive to do an omega test for a physician. Even though it can help you. Okay. So, so I know we said we were going to go, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I, okay, I, I, no, just, no, I just, uh, no, cause now I want to know what you mean by that. Like, so what do you mean by there's no financial incentive? for a doctor to okay to so that. look look at your own story susie you okay. went in you had your lab work done your liver enzymes looked okay yeah and then a couple weeks goes by you feel like you may have a hernia so you decide to go get it test checked and when they check it they do a ultrasound and they also discover that you have fatty liver well right. when your liver enzymes are off that's when they would say, you know what? You got some liver damage. Let's do an ultrasound. Well, because your liver enzymes weren't off, they just assumed you didn't have a, you didn't have fatty liver. Right. But then you, you actually had fatty liver. I did. So why is it that a doctor wouldn't just automatically check your fatty liver with ultrasound? Because there's no prescription. 
If you have fatty liver, the doctor doesn't go, okay, let me write you a prescription and I'll see you in three months. I get what you're saying. And the same thing happens when it comes to your omega testing. Okay, you're you have you're uh, out of balance. What what is he can't prescribe anything? There's no pill. There's no pill. Right. So all he can do is say, hey, eat better, maybe eat some more fish, and you know, and uh we'll keep an eye on it. Like what? <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like everyone yeah. would benefit. So you could have a company like this that could almost have a monopoly because of how they they uh created the oil. And that's never going to happen because the goal is not to get people so healthy that they don't need to go see their doctor. The goal is to make it where you're not too healthy. So you have to go see your doctor. Absolutely. 100%. So then at the end of the day, that's like when I talk to coaches and I, and, and they find out that it's uh, the products available uh, with a network marketing company and if they've had experience with network marketing companies, they have a they they may have a negative vibe about it. And I go, don't let that get in your way of seeing what is now being made available to you. Right. Because I am not a guy that has worked with Fortune 20 companies that is out here promoting and touting network marketing. I don't have anything against network marketing, but it's very difficult for me to find a product that I know people would benefit from and they would like and won't make me look stupid when I'm in front of, you know, these board of directors at these big companies. Right. Because yep. they're not even going to argue the data. The, the data is clear. Now it's just a matter of people waking up and like, you know, it's kind of like when I, when someone says, well, you know, let me do my research, do your research. What is that research? <laughs> I mean, Omega-3 is like, it's clear. If you want to do research, your only research is going to be like, okay, I want to see why this product is not rancid and what makes it special. Then I can explain that to them in seconds. And then they still go, well, let me, let me think. I go, think about what? So those people, I just say, do the test. Just, right. just, just get tested. Because yeah, you're not you hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, there's no, I mean, there is no better way because you, you have a result, you know, where you are. There is no arguing with the result. It is what it is. Right? Yes. Um, now, Wendy did ask a question when she robbed the oil. She said, I wasn't suggesting using a whole cup of the oil. LOL. I mean, I really wouldn't use, I mean, you could put some oil in it, but I wouldn't do that. I would just take my oil like normal. And then she said, isn't peanut oil ratio really high in omega-6 to 3? Peanut oil does not have the same scary level of, of uh, linoleic acid, uh, omega-6. Why peanut oil is, is pretty good is that it's a ground nut. Uh, it does have some omega-6 in it but it's it's pretty stable otherwise and so being stable when you do deep frying like a turkey peanut oil would be a good one to go with same as palm oil um the good news is that peanut oil and even palm oil is not like woven into all of our food but they are a little bit more stable than than other oils now if you look at omega-6 and omega-3 oils, omega-3 is actually more unstable than omega-6. I mean, so, but we're not telling people to cook with omega-3. We just know that when omega-3 is in your body, we can start to see some real positive changes. So hopefully that wasn't confusing, but I just wanted to kind of touch on that question. Yes. So, all right. Well, that was a lot of information, Robert. Thank you. Um, because I'm help, you know, you're helping me understand all of this better because I know in turn it's going to help me help my clients, right? And friends and family who are dealing with inflammation. And um, I'm just excited. I I'm really, really excited. All right. Well, our goal is to get the word out, and it's up to people to, to take advantage of it, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Mission accomplished. Thank you for making time, my friend. Yes, thank you. Thank you for uh, for having me on here. All right, you guys. Everybody have a good one. If you have other questions, uh, Susie and myself are both available for free consultation. You can go to her website. You can go to my website. You can click on the link for a free consultation. And it's free. Uh, my recommendation, if you do that, because I do get people to do this, uh, write down as many questions as you have. If you have supplements that you want some feedback on, make sure you have them readily available so you can text us, you know, pictures so we can look at it and give you some feedback. Uh, and then, you know, if you want to learn about our programs and how we help people, then we'll be able to provide that as well. And then other than that, it's all about like making a difference by empowering others to live their best and healthiest life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why we do it. That's All right. Well, it. Susie's living her best life, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm definitely right. trying. So. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you guys, I'm going to play a little music and uh, we're out of here. And then uh, hopefully Susie and I will be coming back every week sharing something that we believe will be helpful to you and your family and moving forward with your life. Awesome. All right. All right, Susie. Until the next one. Thank you. All right, Bye. you guys. We'll be back.